Okay, what we're going to be learning about in this video is the fourth and is the fourth method for um, oops, let's get the right thing here. Is the fourth method for calculating votes. So yet another election method. This one is called um, Copeland's method. It has another name that it's often referred to as well, and that is the pairwise comparison method. Um, Copeland's method was actually developed because if you remember that idea of looking for a Condorcet candidate and having this possibility of when you have a Condorcet candidate that someone else could still win the election, with um, with all of the other methods that we've been talking about, we they still didn't really fix that problem. They did a better job of taking into consideration the fact what the other what the um, lowered down second choices and stuff like that were for your, your election, but what they really just didn't weren't able to finish capturing was a way to actually make sure that that most popular candidate wins. Um, and so this method here, the pairwise comparison method, is was actually specifically designed to guarantee that no matter what happened, that whoever the most popular candidate was would actually win the election. Um, and so they were kind of guaranteeing that particular fairness criteria. Um, the, the method for pairwise comparison is basically that we're going to do a whole series of every single possible one-on-one -on -one election. Um, so in this particular case, we have three candidates, so we actually end up with three possible matchups. We are going to do A against B, we can do A against C, and we can do B against C. And that lets us get, look at every single one-on-one -on -one matchup possibility that we could have. We've actually learned all of the work in the process for um, figuring out um, who the winner using Copeland's method is. We've, we figured out how to do these one-on-one -on -one election sets already. Um, so let's review. If we're doing A versus B, all that we're going to do is we're going to look at each column and we're going to decide does A win or does B win? Who's more higher ranked? Whoever's the higher rank wins those votes and they go in their column and we're going to add them up. In this case, A, these nine votes, A is the top player, so those nine votes get A. In the next one, we're just comparing A and B. A is above B, so they get the 14 votes. In the next column, B is the first choice winner, so B gets those first 15 votes. And here, B gets these four votes because it's at the top of the bunch. When we get to the next column, notice that neither A or B are first place winners, but that doesn't matter. We're just looking at how A and B compare. A is higher than B in the ranking order, so A gets the two points. And as we come to the last column here, again, we're just comparing A and B. B is higher ranked, so B gets those 16 points. Then we just add up each column, and here the A column is 25 points, and the B column, this is what, 30, 45 points. Um, 45 is bigger than 25, so B wins the pairwise comparison method. Then we're going to do every single one here, so we're going to look here at the next set, um, and we're going to do A versus C. Again, just look at each column. See which of the two candidates wins the battle, they get the number of votes in their column. A is ranked higher than C, so A gets the 9. In the next column, A is higher than C, so A gets those 14. In the next column, C is above A, so the 15 votes for that column go to C. When I come here to the 4, I'm looking at A versus C again. A is ranked higher, so A gets the 4 points. A against C, C is higher, so C gets the two points. And A against C, C is higher here and gets the 16 points. Add up the columns. This is 18 plus 9 is 27. Add these ones up. I'm at 33. And in this case, 33 wins, so C is the winner. One last matchup to do. I've got to do B versus C. When I do that, B wins the nine points for the first one. B versus C, C wins the 14. When I look at the 15 column, B is at the top, so B gets those 15 points. And B is also at the top of the next column with 4. The last two columns, notice C is in first place, so in B versus C, of course, C will win both the 2 and the 16. And then I just total each column. When I total this column here, I get 27. When I total this column, is that right? 9 and 9, nope, 28. Let's try again. Um, 
And when I total this column here, I get 32. 32 is the winner, so C is the winner. When I do, um, once I've done every single matchup, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a tally chart of who wins each set of elections. So in this case, B wins one point because B won this A versus B matchup. Then when I look at the next matchup of A versus C, C won, so C gets one point. And when I look at the matchup of B versus C, C won, so C gets two points. So A has zero points using Copeland's method, B has one point, and C has two points using Copeland's method. Whoever has the most points at the end of the matchup analysis is the winner. So C wins using Copeland's method. When we do all of those pairwise comparisons, C comes out ahead. Okay, and so that's our winner using the Copeland's method process. Um, the nice thing about Copeland's method again guarantees that we have um, a con if there's a Condorcet winner, that it guarantees that that Condorcet winner will actually win the election every single time, no matter what. Um, if there's not a Condorcet winner, eh. It's all good. It's an okay method. Um, one of the problems with the pairwise comparison method is the fact that a lot of times when you come down here, we end up with ties. Um, so when you're trying to decide if it's if it's a tie between the two, so like if A and B both got the same score doing the one-on-one -on -one matchup, um, then each of those gets half a point is how it would work. So A would get half a point and B would get half a point and you distribute things that way. Um, another problem with Copeland's method is it, is it comes out fairly frequently that we end up with ties. Here we had A had one point and, or sorry, we had B had one point and C had two points. Um, sometimes it's possible to even have A ha has a point, B has a point, and C has a point, and then it's a three-way tie. That makes it kind of painful when you're trying to pick a single winner, um, which is usually the goal when we're running an election of some sort or another. So good method, got some good advantages, got a few weaknesses and disadvantages as well, but it's an important one for you to, to learn how to use. Um, again, let me just make one quick note here because on some of your um, problems, you do have elections where you have four candidates running against each other. And with Copeland's method, that really, this kind of grows exponentially to some extent. There's a lot more um, pairwise matchups that we have to do um, because there's more candidates. And so for if you have four candidates, let's look at how this would be different. You would still have to do, we'll just call them A, B, C, and D just for easiness' sake. You'd still have to do A against B and A against C, but you'd also now have to do A against D. Then, who else have we missed? Well, B needs to go against C, but B also needs to go against D and see who wins that one. And then we still have a C versus D matchup that we haven't done. So with three candidates, we only had to do three of these pairwise comparisons. But when we get to four candidates, we actually have to do six different one-on-one -on -one matchups. And so we'll have six points that we'll have to distribute by doing each one of these for each one of the different matchups. It's not very hard to do one, but you can see already with four candidates, there's a lot of different options and a lot more of these one-on-one -on -one matchups that we have to do. Five candidates, it's going to be even worse, um, and so on. And you can see that it kind of quickly gets out of hand. But for small candidates, it's a great it's a great method. You can do it here with six, isn't too bad. Um, the process of adding these up isn't too difficult, so it's not too terrible. Um, but give it a whirl. Um, Copeland's method, we're going to go back and try all those same elections that we've done all over again using this method. And this is the sort of wor work that I'd like to see. I'd like to see what your decisions are for each of these matchups and then figure out how many points each candidate gets and then, of course, the final decision of who the winner is when you're done. All right, give them, give them a try, and um, we'll come back here for a discussion about the fairness criteria and what's good and what's bad about all of these different methods.